go to look in the bulb houses with you today. I think it's pretty well about the peak flowering of the hoop petticoat narcissus. So a bit later than some years. So it's I just want to share it again with you and let you see some of the the nice ones, the different forms of narcissus romoxii here. I think this. From what I'm seeing on my screen, this camera, like many digital struggle to capture the these colours, these yellows pro properly. But if I put my hand in, you'll see them better. But that's nice flower size. If we compare it, this lovely big white one is one of my hybrids. It involves Cantabricus, Bulbicodium, and Romoxii, and this is. This is the one, this is Narcissus Crate and Chorister. Next door we have a pot of seedlings, mixed seedlings that Chorister was selected out of. Moving over, this is a pot of Narcissus Romoxii, the JCA805. So this pot full raised from Jim Archibald's seed that he introduced from. North Africa from the Atlas Mountains and really a beautiful selection have, has come from this original introduction. I, I would speculate that a large number of the Narcissus hoop petticoat forms that we grow have got this plant in its parentage. So coming round we, we come round some of the others. A nice pot here of Narcissus bulbicodium. The lovely, lovely yellows, which on my wee viewing screen are not looking, the camera's not coping with them very well. I'll see when I get to the big screen, but the whites, forms of Romoxii, different selections. <clears throat> Coming around here, these ones pointing, flowers pointing upwards are Narcissus Romoxii Riffinus, this one with a Lobed Corona, so we've got sort of scalloped edge. Another pot of Riffinus here. Not so much of a scalloped edge, but flowers usually pointing up with the, the style and the stamens all pointing outwards. Over here, another of my seedlings that I've just selected out for potential cloning up. Round to the pot of Narcissus Romoxii albidus. So that's a nice pot full of that. Past the snowdrop, which we won't look too much at just now, we'll look at them another day. Here's a, here's a pot here of a mixed pot. Obviously there's some seedlings getting in. This has this is Riffinus, Var Riffinus as well. But this is an interloper. This is what happens if you don't repot for a few years and your seed drops into a pot, you'll get mixtures. Coming over another, two more clones, these are in se two separate pots. These were the ones I split out the other week and these were potential naming. We come around here and name one Narcissus Camoro. A really good hybrid between Narcissus Romoxii and Cantabricus Monophyllus, raised by Henry and Margaret Taylor. That's a really nice one. and. It's also a good parent. It's, I use that often as a parent for other plants. Similar, this is the form we've grown for years as Narcissus romoxii mesatlanticus. And I, I've often thought that it's not really true. I think what we grow is possibly a hybrid as well. It seems like a hybrid to me. But again, being used as a parent for many of our hybrids. And if we cross Narcissus Romoxii Mesatlanticus back to Romoxii. This is a pot full of that, just so that's the cross between those two. Round here we have what you get when you start to have open pollinated seedlings. This is a pot of open pollinated seedlings, that lovely mix. So, I mean, you know, you get to that stage, I start to get less worried about what you call them. Who needs names when they're just enjoy them for their beauty? So I'll move round this odd 
ones there's a lot of other bulbs there through past the Sternbergias more snow drops but I'm going to jump these because I want this to be mostly about narcissus here's a pot with mix another pot with some mixtures here are some mixed seedlings we pot this is the little short compact one that I want when you compare that even in our low light that's barely if you want it in inches six inches or 15 centimeters high about half the height of the of the other ones so the it's, it's a really nice little one only criticism I have of it would be its stem is a bit thin so I have been crossing that onto other ones with a thicker stem so hopefully get a short stemmed short thick stem so let's just move from this bulb there's the tropiolum coming up the side and we got I'm going to move on to the other bulb house the smaller pots will move through them some odd crocuses here's a nice little look at this is a nice little one this look at this dinky little fella down here that's a nice little seedling I like that the the style very exerted and when you compare it to this in this pot there's another gather them up and get the leaves out of the way so you've got a short small flowered and then these big bigger flowers obviously the same sort of seed but that that's a nice little one sometimes little ones are nice this is another of the lobed corona round here this is a nice pot and this is the one that features on the cover of the bulb log this week two seedlings two groups or a group of seedlings but these two at the right hand side very flat petunioid really big open very typical of some of the JCA 805 forms of Romoxii and this one more of the cupped shape Corona but a nice selection but that that's a nice vigorous flat face one and I think I'll try and clone those out as well so over to another pot full of what have I called this oh this this is good this is a pot of creating clumper which is I named because it really does increase rapidly as a bulb so round and pass some more there that's the those in the plunge but where we really start to come is if we come round to the sand plunge where they're just planted in here it's really peaking at the flowering stage just now so many fantastic just the mixture of the ones I've been showing and just all put in to mix so there's all sorts in here some now starting to go over hopefully we'll maybe get some seed this year last year we got very little seed because the weather was so cold and damp but we have had some reasonably sunny days when the temperature in the glass house here has gone up but just it's just such a a beautiful selection it's just a joy to have this actually and when you think I don't have to repot these every year they can just stay in there the only time I'll do something is when the clumps get too big something to watch here is as the the flowers go over sometimes the the remains of the flower in the damp will pick up rot so we just slip it off and hopefully that'll prevent rot and we might get seed seed set on that so just the range so you get forms like bulbicodium and more like albidus and then the, the hybrids with cantabricus really just a, a joyous And flowering later this year than some years, the peak sometimes is a bit earlier. It depends on conditions. In some, I suppose in some years that it might even be a bit later. Really quite big. I put my hand in a very large flowered form there. The more yellow ones. The one comment. The one thing I want to maybe do is. 
although it's it's changing now because the white forms tend to flower a wee bit earlier is it would be good to have some early yellow flowering forms mixed through because for a while this this bed has been quite dominated by the whiter forms and only now the the yellow forms are coming so try and get some more early yellows mixed through but that's really a dead easy way to do it it's just you don't need the pots put them in the sand so that's a, a review of just the, the bulb houses and the hoop petticoat narcissus that's all that's